taking down the freeway with Team Katusha Alperson. So you can see we've got some riders ahead of us. They're pretty chill on the descent. Some of them are a bit sketchy. Some of them, well, not sketchy, but some of them don't really like going too fast. Others have speeded ahead, as you can see. But they take it pretty casual on the descent. I'd definitely say that's one thing I've noticed. Uh, you can see here they take it a bit wide. Um, but, you know, all pretty casual. So I, I zoom on the inside. I think that guy was like, what? <laughs> Just cut on the inside of a well tour rider. But they're all, like, pretty confident. I'm not sure, like, how... Um, how content some of them are going super fast because I think the guy on the back, Kachekov, he seemed pretty like nervous as going super fast and maybe like in races he doesn't really like doing it but he knows that he has got to do it because otherwise he won't get a contract but others I think definitely really enjoy speeding down the descents. I'd say one thing is that they do, they're just really relaxed, they just, it's like, they they don't think about crashing it seems because they just sort of like all go quite close to each other and they've got hella skills as well, you'll watch in a minute, like, I think they're quite, they're very good at negotiating roundabouts, just like the right line and like, you know, when to swing in and out. So there's sort of a little bit of, um, I don't know how to describe it, sort of like a chicane almost. So that guy was behind me. Um, it's always like polite if you see a pro rider behind you, just let them back into the line because um, you don't want to crash in front of them or whatever. Because uh, if you crash behind, normally it's fine, you're not going to gonna damage them. Uh, but if you crash in front of them, you could cause some problems. But you can see there, they like roll up the side of the gutter or whatever. Like they're pretty, they're very confident on their bike. Uh, but the, watch, watch the people ahead, like how fast they take this. They're like, whoosh, zoom. Like they, they're very confident uh, bike handlers, obviously. And they're just pretty, they're pretty like good guys, to be honest. Um, on the descents, they, they point everything out. They don't, like if there's some rocks or some sticks, then they'll, they'll let you know. Um, they're just very smooth. They know also exactly when to like, when to pedal out of a corner, and they can drop you on that sometimes because you're not used to it. Uh, but yeah, I'd say mainly they just just stay relaxed, stay chilled, um, and don't go too hard on descents if you don't like it. I mean, just go inside your comfort zone. It's quite good to follow other people maybe who are similar standard, maybe a little bit better, and just uh, just so you can get faster. I mean, ultimately you will get faster the more you descend. But I think one thing is it just like never go crazy. Uh, so you can see we now flicked over to Team Sky. Uh, they is Ergen Banal, one of the best climbers in the world at the back, um, and the rest of the team. And again, most of these guys, when they're going chill, descend on the tops just because it's, it's sort of slightly more comfortable for them. Um, and they're not really railing it or anything. But I think when you when you are railing it or going a bit fast, I, I definitely recommend the drops. Just can get a bit more, a bit more like control on the brakes. Uh, and also just, just feels a bit more comfortable. You can get a bit lower in the corners. Um, so yeah, so you can see, you know, do the, the usual where the inside pedal is up, the outside pedal is down, just so you can, so you can, you know, lean out the bike over a bit more, but also just get a bit of control by pushing your, if you push, try and like sort of push the bike into the ground and um, you can gain, gain some extra traction, which is, which is pretty useful on wet days. Like normally the, the roads in Adelaide are pretty sticky, even on the wet. So you're not really going to slide out unless you're really going for it, uh, which is good. So you can just sort of cruise cruise along um, on the descents quite nicely. So I've got some wet footage, I believe, coming up with Michelton Scott. So you can see they're very relaxed. Again, man, I was like one hand off the bar. Um, but you can see the draft. Like sometimes they pedal on, on the front and we're just doing no watts at the back, which is good. I mean, obviously this isn't super fast. Uh, we're only getting probably 60 k's an hour. But you can see they, they do sometimes drop you on just the way they don't have break unless they really have to. But often when you're riding like and you don't necessarily know the roads, I do know these roads, but uh, you often just break just in case. But with them, they don't mind breaking like really sharp and late in the corner, which I think is obviously because a lot of these roads that the pros ride on, uh, they don't know them at all. Uh, so they're sort of make, not making up as they go along, but they, they, they're not sure exactly how fast they can get around the corners. But they, I think they try and leave the braking to as late as possible, which is definitely something I noticed. They won't like pre-break because if you do that and then the person behind you decides not to, they can then gap you around the corner or whatever. Um, and also, I mean, they're pretty comfortable on their bikes. Like even if they do slightly mess up their braking, I'm sure that they could definitely be able to correct it. It's just quite like therapeutic watching them just go down because they're just all so in control. They're all just riding so close to each other. Like you can see they're just so efficient on the bike. That's one thing you notice. Like Jim Rod always says it's like a, a school of sardines sort of just like going through it. It, it, it is true like they just they're just like a pack and they just fly through and they just look very calm very relaxed they all do it almost identical things as well because that's the best way of cornering 
uh, and you can definitely learn. Um, it's good just to try and stay, stay in their wheel um, and just sort of observe what they do because you don't want to get too close. Uh, but it's good. It's good practice nonetheless, the descending. So you can see these guys are just dropping back now. Um, let's just let them in. And then, yeah, Blade just, you can see that I'm pretty sure that's Owen Duel on the left hand side here. Um, he looks pretty comfortable. Actually, no, sorry, it's not. That's someone else. It's Wisney Oscar, I think. Cause he's, oh, no, it's Halverson. It's Halverson because he's got his um, Shimano shoes on. Uh, so, yeah, again, most of these guys are running Shimanos. Uh, they're all, I think, Duel maybe was running in Speed Plays, but everyone else was running Shimanos. Uh, most of them had either City or Shimano shoes. Uh, they don't have a shoe sponsor. Uh, it's Team Sky. Some 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 teams do, uh, which I don't really think is good because it means then if you don't want to wear that, that team's shoes, you just then have to wear shoe colours, which just look a bit like meh. Um, obviously, it's more money for the team, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. Even saddles, it's, it can be hard. Um, so now we move on to Michigan Scott. So we're just descending Norton Summit Road here. Uh, it's a really good climb. 5.5k, 5%. Um, so you can see I've got Jack Bauer ahead of me, uh, Alex Edmondson on the left-hand side, and Matthew Heyman on the right-hand side. Um, we're just going on the wet. You can say they, they take it pretty casual on the wet. Like I was pretty confident. I knew we'd go a lot faster, but th there's just no need, there's no point in crashing. Uh, so they're just taking it very easy. Um, and that's one thing is like I think they are aware when to risk it and when not to risk it. And I think in training, there's no need to risk it. Like sometimes it's good to practice your descending, but always just make sure there's, no, there's not really a chance we're going to crash, like if you know what I mean. Like you might take a corner with just slightly too fast and like you, you knew you'd, you could make it. And that's the thing. Like you don't never want to be like if I if the corner suddenly does sharpen up, I'm gone. Because in a race, maybe that's fine because that's how you can get away. But in training, there's just no need. Um, they're pretty calm on the wet. They try to keep the bike as upright as possible on the wet, and that's one thing to do. Uh, I think at the tires in the wet, you can definitely tell a difference. I had some giant gavier tires, and they were they were fine in the dry, but just really really useless in the wet and quite quite dangerous to be honest. But I've changed to some Vittoria courses and. They're good now, so in the wet I have a lot more confidence. But it also just depends on the roads. Me and Francis were talking about this today, and saying like Spanish roads, and often European roads in the wet are really bad because it's they're quite dry. But in Australia, the roads are, they're, they're, I think they're sort of the best because they're they're quite grippy. But then at the same time, they don't seem like UK roads where they're super slow. Um, so in the wet they're good, and um, in the dry they are quite fast as well. So I'd say they're. Some like some really good roads to ride on, not too potholey either, which is nice. Um, so when you're descending, you just do point out the potholes or whatever. Uh, the pro riders do that if there's any potholes or drain covers or whatever, especially when it's wet. Um, so you can see they're pedaling along, but not not too much. There's they don't really want to stack it. Uh, they try and avoid the white lines as well. Um, they pretty similar a technique I think in the wet you normally use a bit more back brake because if your back wheel starts skidding out that that's fine but if your front wheel does that then it's a uh, it's not great at all because you're probably gonna probably gonna end up on the tarmac but you can see like I didn't want to go too close just because I really didn't want to slide out or anything and ruin <laughs> ruin their team uh, but yeah it was good it's quite funny actually because I realized that that day that cycling news were actually um doing some interviews uh, with them I didn't realize that at the time um, but yeah it was quite interesting to hear what they said. Um, they interviewing Alex Edmondson and Matt White, and just talking about the stages or whatever. Um, I don't. They're not descending Norton Summit. They're just going up. But it's good practice nonetheless. Um, we see some other guys. The Ben Long Swiss Wellness presented by Savello team. That really ro does roll off the tongue. Really like that one. <laughs> um, but they were there racing for the Australian national team for the Uni SA team. Um, so we saw them, and they were some friends. I think of Alex Edmondson and some some of the other guys. Uh, which is always nice to see. They're a pretty friendly bunch. So good edge of them. Um, so yeah, not on summit, not very technical descent really. Um, they're not really going full gas. Um, so none of these corners, you're really gonna, you're really gonna slide out or anything. Um, it's just and there's only, I think there's one sharp corner uh, for. So look, you can see they're signaling they're gonna go around just so I don't crash into them. Um, yeah, there's, there's one sharp corner on Norton Summit that I've messed up before. And here you can see the Ben Long Swiss Wellness team on the left. They're doing some training pre-tour down under, which is nice seeing all the mates of these guys, which is quite funny. Um, so you can see the road is like pretty wet here, but it's, it's not too bad at all, really. Um, clean a bit of GoPro lens. I hope we... Oh yeah, and then we move on to uh, a track, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, 
so you can see we're going to do some the, the Tregarthen rollers um, and some other descending. So these guys are just out on the training ride, just two of them. And again, they're pretty relaxed. Like, that's one thing you notice like on the descents. Like, the pros are never worried about um, crashing or anything like that. They're just quite chilled out. Um, so you can see a little effort from this guy. Um, this is this is good fun. I mean, it's a completely flat descent, so it's fine. Um, uh, you're not really going to crash. You just watch for the crosswinds, I guess. Um, I think they can be bad. But you can see that guy's really smashing it and doing some a bit of solo breakaway practice. I'm just getting in the arrow position. Um, do they use the arrow positions? Yeah, sometimes they do. Skyboys do, were doing a bit, but I think generally they try and leave that for racing or whatever because it can be dangerous, especially on the open road. Not necessarily because the position is dangerous in itself, which it is slightly. It's more that you can't get out the position very quickly when you're sit, sat on the top tube. But when you're not sat on the top tube, um, you can just get out the position a bit easier. But also when you sit on the top tube, you increase the um, your weight distribution. So your weight distribution massively changes so that the... Um, the weight on the front wheel is far higher than, than usual, which I think does change does change the uh, stability of the bike quite a lot. Um, so you can see, well, you know, it's decent decent hills. Um, I think there's couple, another couple of minute, minutes of this, but I think the main thing to just to pick up is just be chilled out on the bike, be relaxed on the bike. Um, don't risk it unless you have to. But in races, um, just hold your line. That's the main thing in a race. And if you are on your own. Uh, just get a learn the course, learn how much grip there is, and then, and then if you can, it can be quite a good way of gaining the advantage uh, if you're a solo or a small group by just really ripping the corners. Uh, that's definitely something that can be done, but I wouldn't necessarily uh, advise it if it was super wet or anything because the wet is always hard just because the grip's variable. Uh, but luckily, when it, it was dry, it's dry in Adelaide 95% of the time, so that's not really a worry. Um, which is always good, which is always good because in the wet, it's not necessarily, yeah, in the wet it's just the variable grip, especially when it starts drying off, that's when it can get quite sketchy because you'll be going around the corner, it'll be dry and then you'll hit a wet patch and then you'll, you'll be sort of flying all over the concrete and that'll be game over for you. Um, so you can see this, we're now just going down the descent into a Rydler itself. Uh, I think we turn right here, but... You'll get to see the the guys. They they're not risking it. Some of them do. Some of the pro teams when they I think when they know the descent or whatever they'll really rip it and they'll really hit hard. Um, but I think it's interesting on the pedaling on the descent. Some some people will pedal quite a lot. I think generally uh, it's good to try and just not pedal too much and just use the aero advantage if you can. But sometimes you will have to pedal to try and get away from someone in a brace. Um, and when you're behind someone, it, it's what what can be quite good is. Obviously, you're probably not going to have to pedal, but if you just try and get an error position, often you won't have to pedal just because of the error error effect, um, and then you won't have to brake either because it can sometimes be hard um, to sort of draft if you're a bit new when it's going downhill, just because you're not used to the fact that uh, you're not used to the fact that the draft is far more powerful on the downhill uh, in comparison to on the flat, for instance, just because you're going a lot faster. Um, so. And you just have a, a bit more speed, so it's a bit weird. And you can see how they take corners, though, like, their legs are ready, and then they just sort of lean over. Very, very chilled um, and pedaling. They definitely do pedal a lot faster out the corner than most amateurs, just because they're used to racing, where if you can pedal slightly before, it means you get onto the person's wheel. Um, so often on racing, you'll be pedaling around corners, which I think for a beginner, it, it's good not to do necessarily straight away, or just try and minimize it, because... When you first like touch your pedal on the ground when you're racing, it can be pretty scary, but you get used to it and you're and when like how far you can lean the bike over and still pedal. But also sometimes it depends. Like if you pedal and your bike's not completely straight up, it can just slide the back wheel out, which happened to Richie Port in Paris Nice in 2015, I believe. Um, so you can see here there's sort of half hour position, just chilling. We're cruising along 60 k's an hour. Um, yeah, it's good. Really enjoy it. Riding with the pros, especially on the descent, it's just picking up knowledge that I'm trying to impart on you as well. If you haven't ridden with pro riders, just like how they how they prefer to descend, how they prefer to climb, it's all just it's all good good practice to learn, like just practice descending, but also just it's good practice to watch people who are good at descending and see what they do and pick up the hints and tips. Because uh, for me, I know my descending can definitely get get a lot better, um, just from the technical aspect, but also just having the no fear aspect as well. Um, so. 
We're just coming to the end of the video because this is the end of December with the Track Boys. Um, so cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next bit. Thank you.